Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the carotid triangle. The carotid triangle is a component of the anterior triangle of the neck. First of all, we should go to the boundaries of the carotid triangle. Antero inferiorly, it is bounded by the superior belly of the omohyoid. This is the superior belly of the omohyoid. Superiorly, it is bounded by the stylohyoid muscle. This is the stylohyoid muscle, the styloid process to the hyoid bone, and the posterior belly of the digestic. This is the posterior belly of the digestic. And posteriorly, it is bounded by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the anterior border. It forms the posterior boundary of the carotid triangle. Okay. So, what structure forms the roof of the carotid triangle? Carotid triangle is formed by the skin, superficial fascia containing the platysma muscle, cervical branch of the facial nerve, the transverse cervical nerve, the branches of the transverse cervical nerve, investing there of deep cervical fascia. So, skin has been removed from this place. We have the superficial fascia containing the flat muscle, the platysma muscle. There is the muscle of facial expression. It has motor innervation by the cervical branch of the facial nerve. And we have the transverse cervical nerve branches. These are providing the cutaneous innervation here. And they are formed from the cervical plexus. Their root value is C2, C3. Okay, so how the floor of the carotid triangle is formed? It is formed by the thyrohyoid muscle. This is the thyrohyoid muscle, the hyoglossus muscle, the middle constrictor, and the inferior constrictor muscle. Okay, so hyoglossus innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. The constrictor of the pharynx are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus. Hyrohyoid is innervated by the C1 via the hypoglossal nerve. Okay, so we got the floor, we got the muscle. This is the posterior belly of diagnostic. It forms a boundary. Boundary, okay. It is getting innervation from the facial nerve. Okay. This is the superior belly of omohyoid. It is getting innervation from the ansa cervicalis, from the upper roots of the ansa cervicalis. Okay, we got the muscles. This is the boundary muscle. These four are the muscles that forms the floor of the carotid triangle. Okay, so what are the contents of the carotid triangle? The common carotid artery, this is the common carotid artery. It has two branches. One is the external carotid artery, another one is the internal carotid artery. Okay. External carotid artery has multiple branches that is present in the carotid triangle, like that of the superior thyroid artery. This is superior thyroid artery. And the lingual artery here. Then we'll have the facial artery and ascending pharyngeal artery and the occipital artery. This is the occipital artery. So the external carotid artery, it will go up, it will terminate in the carotid gland into the superficial temporal and maxillary artery. Though the, this, that part is not a content of the carotid triangle. Carotid triangle branches are here, these branches. This is the carotid triangle. Okay. Veins. What veins are present here? Internal jugular vein. And over the internal jugular vein, we also get the deep cervical lymph nodes. 
and deep cervical lymph node. We have two divisions, the jugular digestic jugulomohyoid. The jugular digestic is associated with the posterior belly of digestic. The omohyoid are going, the deep cervical lymph node ultimately going to the to, to the jugular diagnostic and the jugal omohyoid along the inferior belly of the omohyoid. Okay, so we got the lymph node here along with the internal jugular vein. Plus, we have the common facial vein. Common facial vein is formed by the union of the anterior division of rectomandibular vein and the facial vein. That common facial vein opens into the internal jugular vein with the lingual vein and the pharyngeal vein. Okay. If we go to the content, we have the nerves, the lower three cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, here is the vertical, this is the vagus nerve, then we have the spinal accessory nerve, spinal accessory nerve innervates two muscles, one is the trapezius, another is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So we, we got that. Then we have the hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve is the nerve which will supply all the muscles of, of the tongue except the palatoglossus muscle. Okay. That is the hypoglossal nerve here. We got the hypoglossal nerve. Okay. We got hypoglossal nerve here. And hypoglossal nerve is the nerve, motor innervation to the tongue except the palatoglossus. Ansa cervicalis is a loop of nerve that is present on the carotid sheet. We have the ansa cervicalis is not, not shown here. There is a loop of nerve that is formed by C1, C2, C3. And uh, they are present on the wall of the carotid sheet. Then cervical sympathetic chain, that is, these are the deep structure not shown here. We have superior cervical sympathetic ganglion, middle cervical sympathetic ganglion, inferior cervical sympathetic ganglion. Carotid sheet and its content, it, carotid sheet contains the internal jugular vein, it contains the vagus nerve, the common carotid artery, and internal carotid artery. Remember, external carotid artery is not a content of the carotid sheet. Carotid sheet is formed by the deep fascia of the neck. We discussed deep cervical lymph node. Ultimately, they will go to the, they will form the jugulodiagastic and jugulomohyoid lymph node. They are present along the internal jugular vein. Okay. So these are the viva question. We just discussed that. We have to go through that part from a book and just get something. Carotid sinus is a dilatation in the at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. Carotid sinus is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve and sympathetic nerve and carotid sinus has, has the capacity to sense the, the blood pressure. So it is a baroreceptor. In the same place at the dilatation, we have a small P-shaped small body in the wall of the bifurcation, the common carotid artery. We call it carotid body and that is essential to sense the pH of the blood, the carbon dioxide concentration on the blood that act as a chemoreceptor. Okay. So these are the viva questions we have to solve from any textbook. Okay. So these are my references and that's all about the boundary and contents of the carotid triangle. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.